Hey class, welcome back to another set of notes here. We're building on what we've learned in the unit one, the living world on ecosystem structure. Today you can see we'll be looking at introduction to ecosystem components one more time. I'll be talking about trophic levels as well as food webs and food chains. To begin with, we're going to look at some vocabulary. This is an important vocabulary to have um, you know, in your notebook and uh, in in your mind in this course as we work our way through this. Uh, this is subject specific vocabulary is going to be really important with success in AP um, classes. Now here we already have two biosphere and biome that were defined in our last set of notes. These are the larger units of our uh, living world. Okay, we're going down to the organism level so our definition there is organisms are individuals in a population so just individual things that we could um, study in an ecosystem. Then we move up larger in scale, a population, which we'll be discussing in our next unit, uh, human populations. Uh, populations a group of the same species living in the same place at the same time. We'll work larger to the term community. Uh, community is all potentially interacting populations. So these could be different organisms um, or different species that are potentially interacting now. So like a, like a population of oak trees with a population of squirrels, um, they together would be a community. Um, building out larger than that, we get to ecosystems, uh, a community of interacting organisms, which are all of the communities that exist, and their environments. So now we're talking about the abiotic components. So it's really a combination of abiotic components in the environment and all the interacting communities, which are all the biotic components. So using those specific uh, pieces of vocabulary, biotic and abiotic, we can see that biotic, again, is a review from our uh, biology classes, hopefully, is living components and abiotic is non-living. So we'll just highlight in our uh, uh, ecosystem diagram here, biotic components first. So anything that's living um, or once living, so the tree, the producer, the rabbit, um, primary consumer, the rabbit, the producer, the fox, the secondary, and decomposers. Uh, abiotic components are non-living factors. These would be anything that's important to the environment itself and its physical structure, so something like carbon dioxide, oxygen, minerals in the soil, um, water, and precipitation in the clouds. All these things are critical to the environment, but they are not living components um, of an ecosystem. So ecologists, what do we do as ecologists? Well, in ecology, we study how organisms interact with each other and their environment. Uh, we study ecosystems. Uh, one of the key things to realize as we go on is that all ecosystems have limited resources. Um, you know, we live on an earth with finite resources and, and um, organisms must compete with each other for survival. Um, this determines how organisms are able to interact with each other. Sometimes in nature we have limited resources and these limited resources are driving what we call competition in ecosystems. What that means is that organisms will be fighting over this limited resource. Um, sometimes and, and very often in physical altercations, actual fights like our, uh, our goats over here banging heads together. Um, but we also see they, they're seeking access to these limited resources which can be food, water, shelter, mates, and even sometimes our habitats in ecosystems. Uh, we have interspecific competition and can occur between two different species. Uh, so this would not be an example here. Um, interspecific would be between two completely different species. Intraspecific occurs within the same species. Uh, so something like uh, uh, two squirrels competing over a nesting site or a food resource would be an example of intraspecific. Uh, a niche is an organism's role in an ecosystem, so it's, it's how they fit in. It's usually where they are in the feeding relationships um, in an ecosystem or any services that they may provide. Uh, because of these two things, the competition and organisms needing a role to play in these ecosystems kind of fit in, we sometimes get something called resource partitioning. What happens is organisms occupy a similar niche to each other, and they're going to try to use the resources in a different way uh, or different places or different times, locations, that kind of thing, to reduce competition so they don't have to expend the physical energy for um, physical competition fighting over resources. So by partitioning, we can see with these warblers here, 
um, they'll feed at and, and nest at these different sites within a similar species or same species of tree. Therefore, they're not competing to um, competing for their limited resources there. Organisms interact in a number of different ways. We see relationships uh, among the organisms based on the competition and limited resources that they undergo. One of those is going to be predation. Uh, this is what we typically see on our nature shows. We're familiar with a, a true predator's kill and eat prey. Uh, as you see these definitions come up, we see plus minus, and we have a key over here, organism benefits. One is harmed. It's a pretty obvious relationship here as to who's, uh, who's benefiting and who's getting harmed in predation. Um, the next example of a relationship we see in ecosystems will be an herbivore. This is a type of predation technically because well, one organism is benefiting, which is the caterpillar here, and the other is harmed, which is the plant being consumed. But this is, we refer to this as herbivory or herbivores, uh, but still fall in the predation category. Other interactions that don't necessarily fit this predation idea uh, fall into the symbiosis category, which is really talking about um, these uh, long-term interactions between species um, when there's limited resources, but there are different ways of going about accessing those resources. Uh, one being mutualism. There's a plus-plus relationship where both organisms benefit. Uh, lichen's a good example of that. Uh, this is an algae uh, living inside of a fungus, and the algae provides sugars, and the fungus provides nutrients and some protection. Um, so they both benefit and are able to survive successfully by living as this one entity of, called a lichen. Um, we have commensalism, which is going to be a plus and a zero. So one's benefiting, one is unaffected. Uh, barnacles on whales are great examples. Barnacles get carried around to food. Um, they don't have to use energy for their own transportation to get anywhere. Uh, the whale isn't really affected in, a, in terms of survival. I mean, they look kind of ugly, but they're not hurting the whale in any way in terms of survival. Um, parasitism is the last one. Um, parasitism is unique in that it's a plus minus like predation, but it doesn't quite fit predation perfectly. Um, while a parasite's going to live on or inside a host and take energy from it, uh, like in this example, the tick is an ectoparasite. It will live on the outside of an organism and suck its blood, um, even though it may be temporary. Um, it still is feeding off that organism, but it's, it's different than predation um, and ultimately uh, you know, some parasites are more permanent than others, but they shouldn't be uh, harming the organism, the host organism, to the point of killing it. Um, so in this case, obviously, that's not happening with the tick. Uh, why is it important to understand relationships and ecosystems? Well, it's important to understand how pieces fit together um, in, in these systems because uh, we can have something come up like a keystone species. Uh, many species are really critical in maintaining balance, and a keystone species is a great example. So here we see with the otter uh, in our, our kelp forests in the ocean, uh, we see how critical the otter is in this vast web of organisms. The otter is uh, a top predator, and it is controlling the population of sea urchins uh, by eating them. If we lose the otters for whatever reason, um, the urchins aren't really being eaten by much else, maybe some sea stars. But this otter can eat way more, and ultimately the sea urchins are able to survive and reproduce, and then they'll eat what they eat, which is kelp, and then they'll take out the kelp forest, as we can see in these pictures here, um, really harming the biodiversity of the entire ecosystem. So analyzing food webs and food chains. So we got these interactions, now we got to look at them in a little more detail. So we'll start to identify um, the relationships and categorize them and map them out and that's what a food chain and a food web do. A chain does it with one connection to one other connection in organisms. So we'll show you that in red circles. A web is going to be the whole diagram that's going to be taking place as we go through this. So the food web shows a flow of energy interconnected to all possible connections and the chain is only one to one to one. Trophic levels are the language that we'll use as we go throughout the, uh, the lesson as we talk about where in the, the ecosystem these organisms fit. All right, so their feeding level. So we'll start by revealing the bottom level here. The first thing is the producer level. These are what we refer to as plants. These are two are photosynthetic, and we have this term, and a lot of these terms are review from biology. This is autotrophs, right? Auto meaning self-feeder. 
Um, all the arrows are showing the flow of energy uh, to the next uh, organisms, which are the primary consumers. So we can see our phytoplankton, the arrow showing energy to the zooplankton. Um, primary consumers are referred to as herbivores um, because they're eating plants. Uh, we go up another level to secondary consumers. Those organisms are getting energy from uh, either producers uh, or primary consumers or sometimes both and we may call them uh, omnivores if they get energy from both, um, but primarily carnivore because they're starting to eat other animals. Uh, next level is another level of carnivores. They tend to get bigger here. They have higher energy demands. Uh, their populations are a little lower because they're, they're competing for the resources there at a higher trophic level, and we'll talk about energy flow a little bit more. What we need to know now is the arrows are showing the flow of energy, like from the fish to the gulls here, and they're consuming other animals as carnivores and tertiary consumers. We get up to the top quaternary consumers, things like our polar bears and our fox here. Um, really large organisms require a lot of energy. Um, the quaternary, this is where we kind of start to max out with the, the number of trophic levels we can get in an ecosystem because we start to run out of available quality energy. Uh, at that point on up. All these organisms, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary, are referred to as our heterotrophs. Hetero meaning other and troph meaning feeding. So they're other feeders. They have to eat other things. They can't make food on their own. So we'll take a look at our uh, food web. It's been revealed. This is the whole thing. Complex interactions, a lot of arrows. It looks kind of messy, but we can look at the flow of energy from one organism to another and start to map that out. Within a web, we can reveal a chain. So you can start to see in the red circles here that pop up. Uh, one good chain, phytoplankton to zooplankton to fish to the seal in this case, and then over to the polar bear. This is one chain out of many that could have been circled. Um, so that's the difference between chain and a web. The chain is everything in red circles, individual connections at each trophic level on the way up to a web, which is showing all possible connections that exist. Our trophic levels can be identified further as um, the producer level or trophic level one. So we simply just count one, two, three, four, five, right? So we can count these levels all the way up um, or identify them by their names, their primary consumer level, secondary, tertiary, or quaternary.